Good morning and welcome to Rising. So I had an interesting start to my day, Brianna. <laughs> yeah. I, le I, I park my car downstairs in the parking structure, but you have to leave your keys with the guy. It's a valley lot. And I got up here and I'm like, oh no, I have the keys. <laughs> but I left the car running. So yeah. I guess they can move it without the car. You know, it's it's one of the remote start things. So you take As the a non-driver, this is news to me. I didn't I didn't know that was even possible, but I'm glad you made it here okay, yeah. Rob. I'm sure our <laughs> viewers are fascinated with this saga. <laughs> Let's just get right into the show, Brianna. What is going on? Well, longtime Biden aide and White House Chief of Staff, Ron Klain, will leave his post sometime in February, according to senior administration officials. Klain's exit is expected to precede broader changes in the West Wing as some staffers leave to work the 2024 campaign season. Though a successor has yet to be publicly announced, the Washington Post reports that corporate executive and former Facebook board of directors member Jeff Zients has been tapped for the job. Zients, who before the pandemic had no public health experience, previously served in the White House as COVID response coordinator from 2020 to 2021, where he spearheaded the Biden administration's national vaccination campaign. Zion's corporate past as an entrepreneur, executive, and investor are leading corruption watchdogs to sound alarm bells. As reported by The Prospect last year, disclosures from 2021 revealed that Zion's was worth some $81.4 million, in part due to his management and investment in several for-profit healthcare companies, which over the years have been forced to pay tens of millions of dollars to settle allegations of Medicare and Medicaid fraud. In a recent statement, the Revolving Door Project slammed Zion's Science expected appointment, writing, quote, Americans are appalled by profiteering in health care, by which Jeff Zients has become astonishingly rich. Americans are aghast at how social media companies have built monopolies and violated privacy laws. Zients served on the board of directors of Facebook as it was defending itself against growing attacks from both political parties. We are deeply worried that Zients will prevent the administration from exercising power righteously on behalf of an already cynical populace. Yeah, you think? <laughs> back when, you know, people like FDR were heralded for hiring people who were farmers to be in the Department of Agriculture, people who knew what they were doing. These days, it seems you don't get a plum job unless you were literally working for the people that in government you're supposed to be regulating and providing a check against for the interest of the American public. It's outrageous. And the fact is, Ron Klain was not a good guy either. Ron Klain was similar, similarly involved in any, any number of revolving door style activities, and people were concerned about what it meant for him to be Biden's senior advisor. But all of the concerns, I'm in the left community, I obviously saw them emerging from a left context, were completely and totally ignored. And my cynical read on this is despite um, Zions having links to both the maligned healthcare industry and the maligned social media industry with Facebook, this is, this is going to be a blip. And because it's Biden's doing it, it's going to be okay in the eyes of liberals. This guy sounds like Ron Klain, but harder, faster, stronger. Yeah. Um, <laughs> honestly, he, he sounds designed in a lab to infuriate you and I. Uh, Not designed in a lab, Ron. Uh, so, uh, yeah, we, <laughs> excuse us. Yeah, watch our interview later. We're going to actually talk about that more. But I, I mean that he both um, it has this uh, history of... Uh, of coming from the health care industry, making yeah. tons of money there yeah. in a way that probably inflames, that in fact does inflame yeah. a lot of left concern. And then also has this history of being, he was an advisor to Facebook. Yeah. And I just, you know, I did, um, I talked in my radar last week, I've been talking a lot about my concern based on those emails I obtained and uncovered uh, between the CDC and Meta, the parent company of Facebook. I'm so concerned about uh, F Facebook being pressured to make bad COVID moderation decisions by the government, the same way that we know that Twitter has been pressured, you know, the Twitter files and all that. And here we have, entering the White House, someone who will who is very well connected at Facebook, who will know exactly the right um, levers to 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 push and to pull, exactly the right people to talk to, because yeah. that is an important subtext of all this. These are these are private companies. Finding the right guy to to uh, to you know, bring your grievances to is very important. Um, on, on, uh, we've learned that for in our own dealings, or I have at least in my own dealings mm. with you know being suppressed, our show on YouTube, et cetera. Who you have to talk to? It helps to know someone. It really does. And yeah. he knows everybody there. And he and he has a history of the COVID policy. Like this is a perfect storm yeah. of of potential to pressure social media companies to restrict information. Yeah, and, and by the way, 
in his previous role with pandemic management, he had no prior experience with that. To working in healthcare, being involved, uh, re representing these healthcare industry actors, apparently making a lot of money from overcharging the government, overcharging me for Medicare and Medicaid payments, it's not the same thing as having any insight into how to manage a pandemic. So it seems like this guy is just failing up, and, and, and you have to start asking the question, if he's not actually substantively qualified for these roles in terms of his life experience, what are his qualifications? And it's hard to ignore that, to your point, it seems like the real value add that he brings is being connected with exactly the kind of industries that are causing disaster uh, in, in the American government and for the American people. Yeah, it sounds like a mess. Even, even his name, Zions. It's, it's, uh, I am the Zions. Trust the Zions. Trust the Zions. <laughs> I mean, this is kind of, this is almost bordering on parody. Um, it yeah. is, uh, it's interesting that this is, this is the first serious um, change up in the White House administration. Biden so far has had remarkable continuity at cabinet. No one has left the cabinet yet, I don't mm -hmm. think. Uh, Jen Psaki was some Jen turnover. Jen Psaki was, was a turnover. But, but Trump had gone through, I think, multiple... Uh, uh, press well, Certainly multiple press secretaries. I, I think he'd already had a chief of staff change. I think he'd already had some cabinet changes. He had a lot of turnover. He forced uh, Sanders to get that makeover, remember? Wait, what did he do? Uh, he, he was upset with... Um, What's your name? Sarah Huckabee Sa Sanders. Sarah Huckabee governor Sanders. Of, uh, governor of Arkansas. Yes. Do you remember there was that news story where he apparently critiqued the aesthetic of some of his, his staff members and made them kind of all go that. out and get tans and blowouts <laughs> and a little wardrobe tweak? Oh, yeah. He's, he's number one aesthetic. I remember him telling Ronna Romney McDaniel, the head of the RNC, to no longer call herself Ronna Romney McDaniel, just Ronna McDaniel, <laughs> which she did. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it, you're right. There has been a certain degree of continuity. It is interesting that the framing of this is people are leaving in anticipation of 2024. So what do you make of that? Because there were these rumors that perhaps the timing of the, um, you know, the the public disclosure of these documents that were found in Biden's garage was the Democratic Party trying to push him out of running in 2024. There are all of these hopefuls that have been waiting in the wings, the Buddha judges, the uh, Klobuchar's, the um, you know Kamala yeah. Harris's that are, are waiting in the wings. Do you think there's any truth to that, or just no. this, this is this some indication that Biden's definitely going to run? I don't. I, I don't. Is, is, is uh, Secretary Mayor Pete competent enough to like <laughs> to, to smuggle a box of documents into Joe Biden's garage <laughs> so that he can run for president four years earlier? Well, not that they were planted, <laughs> but that the the discovery that you know I know that a lot of conservatives have been saying they waited till after midterms to save. The Democratic Party, but saving the Democratic Party and saving Biden are two different things. And was this is the kind of disclosure that yeah, was going to come out ordinarily, or is this, this is people in the I Democratic Party? I guess I can't Party. put it past the Democratic Party to being this like self sabotaging, mm -hmm. but 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 hurting Biden. I, again, I'm saying this from like a neutral standpoint, not from who I would prefer or what policies I think are correct, but. Joe Biden, like Joe Biden, is going to run for president again, and, and trying to take him out of the game is to whose benefit? Is in order to have Kamala Harris earlier, quicker? Who does? That doesn't seem to benefit the Democratic Party to me. I mean, Joe Biden say whatever you want to say about him is defiantly popular compared to other people in the Democratic Party. I think that's right, but there is this history of trying to get Biden not to run. Obviously, he stepped aside in 2016, yeah. not to the Democratic yeah. Party's yeah. benefit. Right, that was a you. huge mistake <laughs> from, uh, from a Democratic point of view. Yeah. Huge and, mistake. And it doesn't look like they were necessarily prepared to coalesce around Biden. He was trailing throughout the primary and including the first uh, few uh, when, was uh, he, what, well, he, because states. he was losing the primaries, but he was always, he, he was Polling mostly ahead of the polls. always one or two. The polls showed that he was eventually, it but, was going to come yeah. down to him and Bernie, yeah. which is the, exactly what happened. But the first three states, I think he was in thir third yeah. to fifth place in each of those states. And, you know, it didn't seem like the party necessarily was ready to back him until it became clear that that was the only way that they were, were going to beat Bernie Sanders. So, or it means we have to stop taking Iowa so seriously. Well, and the Democratic Party fixed that, too, <laughs> changing the order of the primaries so that Joe Biden will have a clear advantage. So that's another piece of evidence in favor mm. of a definite Biden run. Now, people like Bernie have said they absolutely won't run if Biden does run, but there's, new, there's news over the weekend. Um, Marianne Williamson said she has uh, launched an exploratory committee, so we'll see if there's a yeah. progressive challenger. Lots of interesting stuff to look forward to in Imagine a, a pro and anti, a pro Biden cabal and an anti Biden cabal 
pl plot one plotting to inst <laughs> to move the primary dates to help him, one plotting to find classified documents to destroy him. Very funny. We'll continue to cover that story as it develops. Still to come today on Rising, Alimi Aluren will join us to discuss the police shooting deaths of a major Black Lives Matter official's relative. Plus, Ghislaine Maxwell has given her first televised interview since entering prison. We'll tell you all about that, what she has to say for herself. That's up ahead, as well as our radars, which are coming up next. Stay tuned.